Hello everyone. I hope that you're all doing well and gearing up uh, for the final exams as I've promised that I would uh, record a special segment on Wordsworth, the world is too much with us. Um, as you prepare for the romantic poetry, especially the one by Wordsworth, I just want you to pay attention to the difference uh, between uh, the daffodil which is a typical Wordsworthian poem and a poem like The World is Too Much With Us. As I've said before in class, that The Daffodils kind of has a much happier tone with the poet who is secluded and wants to be secluded away from uh, society and is happy to wander all alone in nature, as you know that romantic poets really find themselves in nature and really invite others to do the same. And now in The World is Too Much With Us, Wordsworth um, shows a more serious tone, all right? And the reason for that is that the persona here said that the people have forgotten all about nature and forgotten how to live. Uh, as I mentioned, this, this sonnet is written in 1802, but was not published until 1807. In this poem, the speaker bemoans the fact that the rise of capitalism has caused economic concerns to come and dominate life. The poem also suggests that life has become become thoroughly routinized and people have become totally devoted to efficiency and that their lives have become completely stripped of magic. Uh, Max Weber comments uh, on this uh, phenomenon and of course uh, he says that this uh, phenomenon has to do with capitalism and pro Protestantism. In his book The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism in 1905, Weber is considered of course the founder of modern sociology and in his book uh, he outlines the ways in which capitalism colonized the Western mind with the aid of the rise of Protestantism. He also notes that the routinization and rationalization of all aspects of life under capitalism has led to a world that is highly efficient, but is stripped of any sense of magic and wonder. Now, if we look at this poem, and let's analyze it line by line, the world is too much with us, late and soon. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away a sordid boon. So in the first line, the uh, persona says that time has become so regimented under capitalism that we are always rushing around frantically. We are trying to get things done all of the time without stopping for a while and kind of just trying to appreciate nature that is around us. In line two, the, uh, the persona says we are exhausted because we are constantly working, but we never seem to get enough done. There's always more work to do. So the more work to do, uh, the, the more work there is to be done. So it just is a non-ending uh, process. In line three, also, it suggests that we have become completely estranged from nature. So little we see in nature that is ours. So the speaker says that nature is still there, but we are just not taking the time to see nature, to um, uh, be part of it, and that's why we are totally estranged and disconnected and divorced from nature. Um, so, and then he says, we have turned our lives over to work, that we're, we're slaves to our work, and, that, and to making money, of course, and trying to get ahead all the time, and it's, is it really worth it? So he's saying, I don't think that the payoff is even worth our uh, efforts. Now let's move to these lines. This sea that bears her bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours and are up gathered now like sleeping flowers. For this, for everything, we, ha we are out of tune. Again, so the problem is not in nature here. The problem seems to be with people. 
um so basically in lines five six seven and eight um uh, the, uh, the 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 speaker says that nature is still there and still wonderful but we just never take the time to appreciate it it's still there and it's really unaffected by us by the way right so nature will always be there but it's our loss that we don't take that time to appreciate um, nature and how wonderful it can be then the speaker says it moves us not great god i'd rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn so might i standing on this pleasant lee have glimpses that would make me less forlorn and so the speaker here says that despite all the material gain that we are making in our lives he would rather live in a pre-capitalist world um basically a world that is not stripped of magic that still has all of that wonder all right and then basically he says have a sight and those are uh, basically mythical uh, images have sight of uh, proteus rising from the sea or hear old triton blow his wreathed horn uh, so again he says despite all the material gain that we've made in our lives uh, it's better to live in a pre-capitalist world that is not stripped of magic he'd rather go back to the days of ancient greece and ancient rome and their wonderful myths that are now lost all of those stories are now lost because we are too busy with the routinization of every aspect of human life that everything in our life is completely devoid of magic all right guys thank you